Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you an easy way to render beef suet into tallow, um, how much we got from half a cow, and then also I'm gonna compare it to the um, pork lard that we rendered a few months ago. Everybody, it's Stephanie from the blog thefarmhousemom.com. Today we are going to render some beef suet into fat. So I have, we have our beef suet that we got from our half cow. Oh, and I just dropped some on the floor. Um, and then I'm going to use my Cuisinart, um, I don't even know how many quarts this is. So I'm just gonna use my Cuisinart um, cast iron ceramic. Oh, is that your toy? Good job. All right. So we will start with a very low heat, as low as you can, and then um, I'm just gonna fill the, the pot up with all the suet without hopefully, you know, getting it all over my stove. So if you watched my other video about um, how much meat do you get out of a cow, yeah, we're gonna use that later. You know that we got a half a cow, and I have already rendered some of this a few days ago. It turned out really good. And I did small batches. So I, I just have this really old um, small crock pot and I did it in small batches. I did notice that some of them turned out a little wider than the others, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put everything in the pot. The reason that I did small batches is, as I'm gonna show you at the end of the video, I also rendered some pork, and that was the first time um, that I had done that. And I left it in too long. I thought that everything had to get like really brown and crispy, um, but it doesn't. It just has to melt and you just have to ladle it off. So um, some of my, and I don't know if we're gonna be able to fit all these in here, let's see. Um, so some of my, pork kind of fried up and it gave a real piggy um, smell and taste to the lard, but then some of the lard turned out really good. So, Okay, and this is gonna melt down. So um, in my crock pot, I filled it full and it was maybe halfway. So this is all gonna melt down. Mom. Yes, buns. Like this. Don't know seeds. Why am I making one eye and another one eye and I not making another eye? So everything behind me is um, canning supplies and then also um, I'm waiting on five food safe um, five gallon buckets so I can put all of my grain in. So I have quite a bit that I am kind of stacking up so I need someplace safe to so store it. So when I did the pig lard, I did it in my cast iron skillet. And I think that it was just too high of a heat. I think that the cast iron just conducted the heat so well, um, maybe a little too well. So we're just gonna stir it up until we start to get a little beef fat. So while the suet is on the stove, I wanted to go ahead and show you the difference between um, the pork lard and the beef suet um, and then tallow. When it's, when it's cooked down, it's called tallow. So you can see the different um, color gradients here in the beef. This is a lot more white and pure. You can see, um, and I have been using this for sauteing even vegetables. It's really sweet. It's got a really sweet smell. Um, I really, really like it. Um, I'm probably gonna save these two. This is a little darker. These have been in the refrigerator, but you can see this one is a little more yellow, so let's smell that. It's still not a bad smell, um, but I might use that for soap making. Um, and then you can see the difference in the pork lard that I, um, last September, that I rendered down. So this is really white, and so this is what we're using for pie crusts, for biscuits, and then you can just see the color gradient of the other ones. These are a lot more yellow. This, these are more white. This has more of a piggy smell. So even the whiter ones have a, it just doesn't smell sweet. It smells more neutral. Um, these definitely, the yellow ones definitely have a more piggy 
kind of smell. Um, so what I did is, is the first time I had rendered lard and um, I did it in my cast iron skillet and I overcooked it. So I thought that it had to um, be, I thought the meat that was left over kind of had to crisp up into little brown bits and it doesn't, it just has to melt. So you just have to melt the lard or the suet and then just skim it off and, and you know, you can put it in your jars. I'm gonna try these for soap making. So the saponification process that the soap goes through is supposed to completely eliminate most smells, which is why it takes so much essential oil and so much fragrance to put into the soap. And even then, you know, it doesn't last longer than six months or a year. That got kind of heavy um, fragrance does not last. So um, I'm gonna try this just in a couple small batches and see if we can get um, some nice soap with some pig lard and some castor oil. So I'm gonna try to do that later this afternoon, hopefully. So let's go ahead and check on the um, suet and see if we've got any tallow yet. So I have went ahead and turned off the burner just because I didn't want it to be, I didn't want it to burn. And so it's already kind of starting to harden a little bit on the top. So I'm gonna stir this really well and then I'm gonna turn it back on low. So I am first going to strain um, the large pieces of fat out um, into a bowl. So, and I might, this is 100 cheesecloth, so I think it's fine enough that I don't have to double it up. So I'm gonna start straining it um, into that. I've got a lot of the beef fat melted down, so let me show you what it looks like. We're starting to get some nice clear liquid, and we still kind of have pieces of the, of the meat that was in it, but that's gonna sink down. So I have turned the heat on and off several times and then stirred it constantly. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the heat on and then I'm just gonna start scooping and straining. to the ladle and I make sure that I clean this out with a paper towel so I can throw it away because you do not want that grease hardening and going down your grain drain so I'm gonna wipe as much as I can off before I wash it new baby goats born on the farm this morning. One of my best does, Wadi, had a little blue-eyed silver boy and then a little buckskin gold girl. All right, I'm just gonna start scooping the larger kind of pieces of meat here just so I can get all of the grease out. It's nice and hot, so I'm going to take advantage of that. After I drain this, I'm going to go dump this outside for the dogs. So I thought I was filming that and I wasn't. <laughs> So what I did is I took my cheesecloth, I folded it into quarters, and then um, I just am doing the final strain. This is really yellow right now as it um, cools it's going to turn hopefully a really white color, but we are just gonna leave this um, 
with the lid unsealed and we're just gonna let it cool. Okay, well it's the next day and we went ahead and put the beef um, tallow into the refrigerator and here's what it's looking like. So you can see next to the pork, it's um, quite a bit more yellow. It's not as white, but if I remember right, this was not that white when I put this in um, the refrigerator. So this may turn whiter over time, but you can see here is some of the beef tallow that we got. This is pretty white. So I'm not sure if this will turn whiter or not, um, but it still has a really nice smell and we can still use it for sauteing um, vegetables or whatever we want to use it for. And if it's, we don't use it up by the time that, you know, it, a year or so by the time it expires, we can just use it for soap. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.